The case for the planet Earth is what I have worked on and uh, I'll make the presentation available as well and you are more than welcome to use it to educate people as long as you uh, respect the copyright on the screen. This is my disclaimer and basically it says that I'm not a lawyer, this is not a legal advice and you need to uh, get a legal advice before you take any action based on the information on this uh, screen or uh, presentation. Um, otherwise you must not watch this presentation or you must not read the details of uh, details and description that I provided here. So who is uh, Dawood Tohidi? Um, I'm the former EIT member of Professional Engineers of Ontario, Canada, a graduate of Interactive Multimedia Web Development Program from Algonquin College in Ottawa, Canada, a distinguished graduate of Honors Business Administration Program with, the, with an average mark of 98% from Willis College in Ottawa, Canada. My accomplishments is uh, our Canadian formal chemtrails and geoengineering petition 2013, my formal letter evidence written to Canadian authorities via a lawyer at the uh, URL blue, my criminal chemtrails and geoengineering lawsuit. It's www.geoengineeringlawsuit.ca. What impact my criminal loss has made is uh, awareness that I, I have made. A very green aviation vanished in November 2013, shortly after the launch of my lawsuit in October uh, 2013. A U.S. Uh, Alaska Harp facility shut down or scaled down to research capacity. Global warming was proven beyond reasonable doubt to be fraud. U.S. Republicans are now opposing global warming and uh, I believe my lawsuit has uh, had a big impact in their decision making. Uh, a possible false flag nuclear attack uh, on US cities was prevented and uh, because I had it in my uh, lawsuit and uh, its relation to spraying of lithium uh, which was discussed by Dr. Deagle surviving the red coat uh, was exposed release of lithium by NASA in the space was emphasized a threat to the sovereignty of Canada and threat of an ice age in 2031 was emphasized it, the population plan via New World Order harp vaccines, chemtrails, geoengineering, GMO, fluoride and aspartame was exposed Illuminati, Club of Rome, and creation of one world government through New World Order were, were exposed. Animal die-offs and its relation to harp was exposed. Man-made storms and floods of Toronto and Calgary in 2013 via next ad were emphasized. Infiltration of mafia in the Canadian politics, criminal court justice system, and law enforcement was emphasized. Presence of Nazis in the U.S. Navy and NATO was exposed. My current situation uh, is uh, that uh, I have been put under extremely high financial pressure and uh, jobs are being denied to me. I'm about to go off grid and uh, as a result uh, the apartment that I'm renting, uh, actually I'm gonna uh, uh, be uh, possibly uh, losing it so I'll be living with some people and um, setups may occur uh, in order to falsely imprison me uh, my personal security is under threat and uh, then homelessness uh, homelessness is a serious threat for me right now and these are all happening because of my fight with these uh, criminals and crimes against humanity so how you can help? Well, uh, if you could hire me, uh, please do so. I'm a web designer and a search engine optimization expert. If you have a website, I guarantee to make a huge profit for you by search engine optimization and also Google AdWords. If you don't have a website, I can create one for you. And uh, um, if uh, else, then please donate to my work via my site at www.geoengineeringlawsuit.ca Why we must fight both chemtrails and geoengineering? 
it's very important to understand both chemtrails and geoengineering. We are heading to an ice age, and an ice age will bring cannibalism, food shortages, extinction of different species, including human. Watch the movie, the trailer, the uh, colony. Nanoparticles sprayed via chemtrails and geoengineering are cooling the planet and are helping the early arrival of the ice age. Former NASA headquartered consultant, scientist and shuttle engineer Mr. John Casey predicts an ice age to happen in 2031. It's vital to mention both chemtrails and geoengineering in your correspondence petitions with the government officials. Otherwise, you will not receive any response for something you have not mentioned. Those who are asking you not to use the word chemtrails in and use geoengineering instead either have an agenda and or misinformed, no matter how big their names have become. See my letter to Dane Wigginton in regards to his call about not using the word chemtrails and other issues at the URL blue. Download the PDF files as soon as you can because my site uh, might not be available after October 2015. A quote from Vladimir Lenin, the best way to control the opposition is to control, is lead, is to lead it ourselves. Lithium, this is very vital and important. File a request for information under Access to Information Act for the allowable levels of lithium in water, air, and soil in your region with the FDA and in Canada with Health Canada. Ask an authorized um, lab to sample and test it for you. So how uh, to effectively fight chemtrails and geoengineering? Listen to everybody, but do not follow anybody. Limit the time sitting behind the computer and sharing pictures, chanting and chatting on Facebook. That's not activism. Get up and do the right thing now. Formal a petition, not online petition. The government on both chemtrails and geoengineering. So you need to formally petition. This is a process of formal petitions. Read, understand the regula regulations about the petitions in your uh, country. This is the formal petitions. For instance, for Canada, see the current guidelines and for uh, guidelines for petitions in the URL be blue. Prepare the text of the petitions. See our petition as a sample at uh, the URL blue. But please note that our petition is over. We are not collecting signatures anymore. Once you've prepared the text of the petition provided the petition to the clerk of the petition in your parliament and have it approved by him or her. Print out the petition and go to the streets and plan events and gather signatures. Then all you need is to find an MP and have him or her to present it to the uh, parliament. Write a formal letter via a lawyer in regards to both chemtrails and geoengineering and ask the lawyer to send it to all government officials, including le leaders of the political parties, on your behalf. See my letter as a sample at the URL below. File a criminal lawsuit after receiving an unacceptable, uh, unacceptable response from your petitions for your petitions and letter via private prosecution against those who are spraying us or those who have allowed the spraying. Make sure to seek legal advice before filing this as it may have unpleasant outcomes. See my lawsuit at the URLs below. My letter was sent to the following Canadian authorities. Private prosecution is a tool uh, that gives uh, power to you, to people, uh, to act as if uh, you were a police officer so you can lay criminal charges against a person or organization who has committed a crime which is not available in, in the USA. Uh, this must be uh, within uh, six months of the offense in Ontario, Canada. Private prosecution uh, is just uh, you go to uh, um, your court, criminal court, and for example, Ontario Court of Justice, and then you get the information form from them. You fill it out. You add your uh, um, uh, evidence with you uh, uh, with it, and then uh, you 
you go to swear it before just after the peace at the just after the peace's office uh, but uh, you must get a legal advice uh, from a lawyer before you go there or take a lawyer with you So uh, make sure to take a lawyer with you and ask him to take all the evidence with him to the meeting with the Justice of the Peace. And if just Justice of the Peace uh, asks why you are here, the answer is to lay information via private prosecution. By law, any citizen in Ontario, Canada can represent himself or herself if for any reason she does not have a lawyer. Uh, snap, a snapshot of uh, uh, my information is here. Uh, uh, you fill out the top and uh, top part, which is your your and accused information, and then bottom part, uh, particulars of offense. And in the uh, I will say section, you add the counts, count one, two, three, whatever, uh, count one, blah, blah, blah. And if you need a second uh, paper for the count one, you copy the top part and you add count one continued and you go to next count later on. So you add another paper, another paper like this, and uh, you add count two again with other information on it. Uh, if the uh, information that you uh, you provided to JP declined, then you have the option to uh, uh, um, appeal it uh, in the uh, higher court uh, by filing a mandamus application, which is a motion. For, for instance, I did fill out the mandamus application form, and uh, I, which I got it from Superior Court of Justice, Criminal Court Intake Office in Ottawa, Canada, and then once it was signed uh, by the court, uh, court staff, I then served a copy of it to the federal and uh, provincial crowns and uh, unit their stamps on the uh, originals after you serve them, along with the motion documents, transcripts of the initial hearing before just of the peace, which you will have to order it via court support counter as soon as your information is declined by JP. And then I served it and uh, filed it, uh, all the documents with the superior court itself along with the affidavit of service and then I appeared before a judge in a criminal proceeding. Affidavit of service is a form you will get it from the uh, criminal court intake office. So after you serve the uh, respondents with the necessary documents, you uh, get the affidavit of service and you just fill it out and swear it before a commissioner at the notary and then take it to, uh, to the um, uh, superior court and just serve the, serve the court along with that along with other documents. This is my mandamus application form to appeal the decision of Justice of the Peace. Chemtrails are not contrails. In a layman world, a contrail is caused by aircraft when there is no extra chemicals added to the jet fuel. However, chemtrails is caused by aircrafts when toxic chemicals and metals are added to the jet fuel. Chemtrails is a word, not a slang. See Oxford Dictionaries online. Watch out for this information being inserted on some website. For instance, climateviewer.com links to the NASA's uh, contrail web pages and PDF files for the definition of chemtrails and then is asking you not to use the word chemtrails. To prove chemtrails, just take a picture or video of a low altitude prison trail, write the day, time, temperature and humidity of uh, your capture day and approximate the altitude of the prison trail. Familiarize yourself with the NASA's Appleman chart at the links blue. Get the to a scale version of the NASA's Appleman chart on page 11 of this PDF file. Based on Appleman chart, any temperature warmer than minus 25 degrees centigrade will not allow formation of contrail, even if the relative humidity is 100%. Humidity at which a contrail may persist at the typical flight level is between 60% and 70% if the temperature profile is to the left of the red line, dash double dot line in the Appleman chart. This means any humidity less than above will not allow a contrail to persist, even if the temperature profile is to the left of the red curve. Okay, so we have the Appleman chart here. Horizontal scale is temperature in degrees centigrade, and the vertical scale is pressure in hectopascal or millibar.
we have a curve in here. The far left curve is 0% relative humidity, and the far right curve is the 100% relative humidity. We have three regions. Always contrails is a region that uh, if the pressure profile fits in there, then contrails always will be produced, and the other one is maybe contrails, and the other one is no contrails. The red line, double uh, dashed line in this chart shows that at what humidity contrails can persist, uh, which is usually between 60 to 70 percent relative humidity. So if the air is moist enough and temperature profile is to the left of the red line, then the Appleman chart indicates that the persistent contrail can form. But if the temperature profile is to the right of the red line, then persistent contrail cannot form, even if the relative humidity is 100%. At the typical flight level, the pressure varies between 200 HPA and about 350 HPA. If we take these figures to Appleman chart, we will determine the corresponding temperatures of minus 50.44 degrees Celsius for 200 HPA and minus 44.61 degrees Celsius for 350 HPA. I will also provide a link in the description section for the NASA's uh, Appleman chart teacher page, which is now removed from NASA's website, printed as soon as possible. You will find the numbers for the maximum temperature possible for persistent contrails on page 8. Okay, so now you are ready to move on to the next step, which is finding the local atmospheric sun and station closer to the area you captured a uh, persistent chemtrails photo or video. Uh, go to meteocenter.com or another site of your choice. You select the uh, station and then uh, select the uh, t table text as type and select the date, select 00z or 12z based on the time of your capture. 00z is for between midnight and 12 noon and 12z is for between 12 noon and 12 midnight. Then you click the go button and look for the height corresponding to minus 35 degrees temperature in the table. If there is no such a thing, you just use the interpolation to find it. If the height of the uh, persistent trail you have captured is less than the height you got from the table, then that persistent trail is chem trails because at the height less than the height you got from the table, a chem trail cannot be formed, even on to be persistent. The data in the table shows the height of about 6,000. 200 meter for minus 35 degrees. For uh, Western Canada, you may use um, University of Wyoming's uh, sounding data. Just when the insertion point is in the station number text box, press enter. In the next slide, I'm going to talk about weather modification. There are different terms which are being used, uh, such as weather modification, cloud seeding, chemtrails, geoengineering, solar radiation management, or SRM stratospheric aerosol injection, stratospheric aerosol geoengineering, and so on. Relationship of weather modification to any of these that I mentioned is the same as the relationship of medical science to dentistry. When the government officials are talking about weather modification, they mean cloud seeding, not the other ones. Cloud seeding is for the purpose of increasing rain and is uh, regulated um, in some countries, such, such as Canada and USA. It is legal and governments don't uh, deny they are performing cloud seeding operations. Chemtrails is the most hated operation and is being done covertly for several purposes, one of which is weather modification. Remember, you and your children are being sprayed with toxic chemicals and metals. You need to take action now. Uh, here I'm going to explain the uh, difference between climate and weather. Climate is the average pattern of variation in temperature, humidity, etc. in a given region over long periods of time. Whereas weather describes the short-term conditions of temperature, humidity, etc. in a given region. If you understand the difference between climate and weather, then you will be able to understand and distinguish the differences and similarities between geoengineering and chemtrails, where they overlap, where they are different than each other. 
Geoengineering is the intentional large-scale manipulation of the climate, no matter for what purpose, i.e. to combat global warming or to combat global cooling, etc. Chemtrails can be used to manipulate the climate or the weather and or can be sprayed in a short period of time in a small region with no effect on climate and weather. If chemtrails manipulate the climate, then it will be considered geoengineering, otherwise it will not. That's why it's very important for us to mention both chemtrails and geoengineering in our petitions and our uh, lawsuits, otherwise we won't be able to address both. So uh, chemtrails may or may not be geoengineering. This is very important to understand, otherwise you will fall into the trap of those who are asking you not to use the word chemtrails. Once again, mention both the words chemtrails and geoengineering in your petitions and correspondence with the government, so you address both. Club of Warm, a private uh, organization, is behind the global warming fraud. In one of their books, called the first global revolution on page 75 this is a quote from that page quote in searching for a new enemy to unite us we came up with the idea that pollution the threat of global warming water shortages famine and the like would fit the bill end quote so why global warming is fraud because nasa has confirmed the hibernation of the sun sun controls the climate on earth and the sun has gone into hibernation or sleep mode therefore this proves that we are in a global cooling era not global warming this is very important to recognize as geoengineering and chemtrails are being sprayed under the guise of mitigating the global warming effects the chart provided by nasa is the count of sun spots of the sun and showcases the sun's hibernation and as we approach 2020 sunspot counts are minimum this proves we are heading to an ice age as it is predicted by mr john casey some of the activists actually they say well it doesn't matter global warming or global cooling we care about chemtrails but i say it does matter we need to know what the truth is if you don't know what the truth is, you won't have an educated fight, and they will insert disinformation. And if you know what the truth is, then you will prevent disinformation. Other than uh, information that, that I'm uh, providing in here, uh, there are a mountain of uh, evidence which proves global warming is fraud. Dr. Don Easterbrook provided a fantastic presentation before the U.S. Senate Committee on Environment in March 2013 with hard data he proved that global warming is fraud and a scam. This is the NASA sun's hibernation chart which I talked about it earlier. The uh, horizontal scale is the year, the vertical scale is the number of sunspots of the sun and as you can see when we approach 2020 sunspots are minimum and we are heading to an ice age. So, uh, watch out for the disinformation. Global warming is proven beyond reasonable doubt within my criminal lawsuit to be fraud. Those who are pushing for the global warming either have an agenda and or misinformed, no matter how big their names have become. See my uh, letter to Dan Wigginton in regards to his push for global warming and other issues at the link below. Effect of aerosol on climate and weather depends on three parameters component of the aerosol height at which the aerosol is being sprayed size of the aerosol next slide discusses the component of the aerosol it's a common sense that based on what the component is different characteristics can be expected from an aerosol for instance if components are water vapor they tend to absorb the heat and trap the heat and therefore tend to warm the weather. If there is nothing in the air and we have a clear scar, then 100% of the sun's ray will reach the Earth's surface. If we add certain particles, which I am going to discuss later in this presentation, then less than 100% of the sun's ray will reach the Earth's surface, therefore will cool the climate and weather. If we replace the uh, water vapor with certain particles, three things may happen. Aerosol may reflect back the sun's ray to the space, 
aerosol may or may not have any effects in long wave or infrared. Uh, this is the waves that are being uh, reflected back from the earth to sky and or aerosol may absorb some of the sun's ray. Next slide discusses the uh, size of the aerosol. This is the rule. The smaller the particle size, the higher the cooling effect it will have. The smaller size particles will have no effect on long waves and only will have effect on the short waves. Uh, short waves are the sun's ray. However, as you are aware, chemtrails and geoengineering mostly contain nanosoils, aluminum, barium, strontium, sulfuric acid, etc. So it's perfectly safe to agree that chemtrails and geoengineering are cooling the climate and weather. For more details on this, please see my uh, article, page 4 and 5 of my article in the link below. Last parameter is the height of aerosol. It's common sense that if, we, uh, if the height of aerosol being sprayed is lower, then more of the science ray will reach the ambient above the aerosol within the Earth's atmosphere. And if the height is higher, less of it would reach that area. So this means the uh, lower is the height of the aerosol, the less cooling effect it will have because more warm air is present in the ambient above the aerosol within the at Earth's atmosphere and the higher is the height of the aerosol the more cooling effect it will have. Next slide is about a carbon dioxide and uh, whether or not it can cause global warming. Um, if you uh, recall in slide 38 I emphasized that uh, pollution is one of the false flag threats mentioned by Club of Rome. So they have come up with the uh, carbon dioxide or CO2 as the problem while not only CO2 is not a problem but also CO2 is the vital part of our ecosystem. To put it in a simple word, human inhale oxygen and exhale CO2 and plant inhale CO2 and exhale oxygen. Without CO2 there will not be a terrestrial life on earth. CO2 is not a pollutant. Next slide is a table which shows the role of atmospheric greenhouse gases, man-made and natural, as a percentage of relative contribution to the greenhouse effect. If we look at it in more details, we will soon find out that carbon dioxide is responsible for only 3.62% of greenhouse effect and, and that water vapor is the most dominant element in causing greenhouse effect and is responsible for 95% of greenhouse effect. Man-made contribution to the greenhouse effect expressed as percent of total in this table. Man-made contribution to the greenhouse effect by all gases including water vapor in, in total is only 0.28%. Therefore, CO2 is not the cause of fictitious global warming. This is the result of a study made by Philippine Berthier et al. at the Lake Blue. Colder, drier conditions plus lower levels of carbon dioxide equals with 39% less terrestrial photosynthesis, 60% less forest cover, 30% less leaf area, 17% less grassland area, 69% less boreal forests, and 286% more polar deserts. Dr. Don Easterbrook did provide a presentation in March 2013 before the US uh, Senate Committee on Environment and he did uh, actually uh, provide lots of hard data which proved global warming to be a hoax. You can find the presentation at the link below. So in the meantime it is very important to understand that CO2 does not cause warming, rather it is caused by warming. There has been times that the amount of atmospheric CO2 has gone up while we have had global cooling. There has been also time that the amount of uh, atmospheric CO2 has gone down while we've had global warming. Claim of CO2 being cause of global warming is fraud. Some people uh, raise the issue of U.S. Public Law 105-85 and that we are given our consent to be sprayed. Don't buy that. If we had given our consent 
to be spread, then there wouldn't have been any right to petition the appropriate government office, as mentioned in the U.S. Clean Air Act. For more information, see pages 24 and 25 of the Geoengineering, Governance and Technology Policy, Congressional Research Service, R41371, prepared for members and committees of U.S. Congress in the link below. So, it is very, very important to formally, not online, formally petition the government and or write a formal letter via a lawyer to the government officials to withdraw any hidden unwanted consent if there is such a thing. This is a quote from a well-mentioned webpage. Basically, what it says is that under the U.S. Clean Air Act, the U.S. Environmental Protection Agency, or EPA, must adjust its phase-out schedules for ozone-depleting substances in accordance with any future changes in Montreal Protocol schedules. Uh, so, uh, I'm going to let you read this and watch a couple of other slides, and when the time comes, I'll, I'll explain again. And remember that chemtrails and geoengineering are responsible for ozone depletion. And this is proven. Just uh, browse the two links below. And I'll provide all the links uh, in the description of the video. So under the U.S. Clean Air Act, the EPA or Environmental Protection Agency in USA is responsible for classifying any substances which causes ozone depletion of the atmosphere. So you know now that uh, EPA is responsible and chemtrails and geoengineering uh, are depleting the ozone and then there you have it, you can go and petition the government for it. See pages 16 and 17 of CRS report for Congress Clean Air Act, a summary of the act and its major requirement and all the screenshot on the screen. In the next slide, I'm going to discuss Orgon and Kembuster. Orgon was discovered by Dr. Wilhelm Reich, an Austrian psychiatrist, and it is named by him, and it is, it is the life force energy that is present in everything. It is known as chi, ki, prana, negative ions, or negative entropy. Dr. Reich confirmed the existence of the Orgon energy in the human body, verified its presence in the atmosphere and what he did he used organ energy for weather experimentation using the tool he invented and named it as cloudbuster this is very very important to know that organ energy is being used in weather experimentation today other than chemtrails and weather modification experiments uh, which are using organ energy, Kimbuster, which is invented by Doncroft and is the modified version of original cloth buster invented by Dr. Wyke, weather experiments also uses organ energy. Kimbuster has removed the potential dangers of cloud buster though and is not for weather modification, rather it is for balancing the upper atmosphere. Kimbuster is a safe device and I recommend building it. Kimbuster has the ability to prevent flash flood and will balance the upper atmosphere. This has been confirmed by Don Croft. I do also believe that it will prevent an ice age. Kimbuster will also prevent the pathogens of chemtrails and geoengineering from coming down on Earth. This has been confirmed by Don Croft. The key to create an an effective Kimbuster is to make sure crystals are not fake and that you use double terminated crystals and that the clear end of the crystals or positive end are placed towards the sky. The more Kimbuster people make, less is the chance of being disabled by criminals remotely. So we need to build as many as possible so that we can protect ourselves. Kimbuster clearly interferes with the chemtrails, geoengineering, 
and weather modification operations because of its use of orgone energy. To learn how to create Kimbuster, please see the following pages. Criminals may be able to disable the Kimbuster remotely and or replace it with a non-effective one without your knowledge. If you build a Kimbuster, do not mention it to anybody and move it to another place every day. Make sure to build it in an open area while uh, wearing mask and gloves and take all the necessary precautions because epoxy is flammable. Those who are discrediting the Kimbuster either have an agenda or misinformed. Orgon Energy and Covert Operations brilliantly have been explained by Scott Stevens in his presentation at Consciousness Beyond Chemtrails at the URL Blue. For the screenshot of Scott's speech on Chemtrails, Orgon and Harp, see next slides. According to former ICMP Chief of Anti-Mafia Operations Ben Suave, Mafia groups have infiltrated inside uh, political figures, law enforcement and even criminal justice system in Canada. I have evidence that also Nazis have infiltrated inside US Navy and NATO, which we, you will see in next slides. So these are the ones who are doing chemtrails and uh, weather modification uh, experiments and we are fighting with these mafia groups. So we have to come together and stand against these criminals who are trying to harm our people, our planet. I am very, very delighted to be uh, working for my people, my wonderful planet and even if I die and come back again to this earth, I will be fighting with these criminals again. Pray for me whenever you can. Thank you. God bless and cheers.